Hello folks, so this is my second video of this week. I did one earlier uh, just on my garage sales and thrift store scores. Um, and this one is all of the stuff that I managed to pick up at uh, the Woodstock uh, Nostalgia Show in Woodstock, Ontario. Uh, it's a great show. It's been going forever. I've been going since I was a little kid. My parents, you know, were collectors and um, all through the 1980s, they used to go to take me to the shows, uh, and Woodstock was always one of the, uh, the favorite ones. Uh, it has a just huge amount of stuff. Uh, it's everything from, uh, vintage toys, advertising signs, Petroliana, lots and lots of paper, lots and lots of smalls. Um, and now you're starting to see a lot more of the 1980s stuff, uh, creep in there. Um, as you can see there, I got some shirts and stuff, but, uh, sorry about the way it's, uh, laid out. I just did my thumbnail <laughs> picture with that. Um, so I haven't, uh, got back down there and done this, but we'll, uh, we'll go through it. Um, it was a really good show. I did spend, uh, a significant amount of money, well over a thousand dollars, um, which some of you are probably going to be going, well, where did you spend that money on? Um, but I think you'll see in the end, uh, it was, uh, a good spend overall. Um, the, uh, we'll start with the shirts. I picked up, managed to get, uh, four decent vintage, um, mostly metal and hard rock, uh, shirts, uh, two crocus, um, this one here, you can see it's the single stitch. Um, these, I don't know if they're made, I didn't check to see if they're made in Canada or not, or USA. Probably going to say Canada because they were here. Uh, oh, made in the USA. It's a Screen Star shirt. Uh, good fade to it too, which is always nice. I think it's a 19, yeah, 1982 tour. Uh, nice fade to it. Here is another Crocus one. Um, whoops, with the floor dust on there. It's the 1981 uh, World Tour. Uh, the tag on this one is roast, but you can still just make out Screen Stars uh, on there. And it's a nice... Again, another really nice fade. This was probably a deeper black rather than the gray. Uh, single stitched all around. Here's uh, an Accept. Um, one for their uh, Russian Roulette Tour in 1986. It's a cutoff shirt, but it's uh, not just one that's been cut off. It was made that way. Uh, Star Prince made in the USA. Single stitch bottom. Um, these were kind of dirty to start with. That's why I'm not too worried about it. Uh, and Russian Roulette with kind of suggestive looking bullets but maybe that's just my dirty mind i don't know uh and the last one is oh, way over here uh this uh saga 1981-82 tour saga was a canadian band they had some success in the states they were like uh kind of like a hard rock I think along the lines of like triumph uh that sort of thing um and again tag is completely faded away but uh it's your raglan style baseball shirt um more commonly known as and then there's a bit of a back splash on there for the worlds apart tour um again good fade pretty nice shape no holes or anything like that and for the price i can't remember exactly um but i think we negotiated it was roughly around 30 bucks 25 bucks a piece they're not i'm not none of them are huge money on there i think um you know I'll easily double my money or more on that um and you know they're worth picking up on that line uh one guy i don't usually get a lot of toys anymore at this because they're really priced out of my range remember this these are dealers um who are selling but you can still pick stuff up because they're generalist dealers who just don't deal with ebay there um, a lot of these guys have been doing it for as long as i've known and a lot of them can't be bothered with ebay um so sometimes for toys and things like that you can still get fairly good deals if that's not what they specifically deal in if they're generalists and sort of uh, buy bunches of different stuff um, sometimes they're just looking to flip sometimes they've had stock sitting around for a while um, this one i walked up and i actually saw these first um carded battlestar galactica id sets from uh, i'm probably gonna guess 78 or 79 made in hong kong um there were two of those and then this watch set there which is kind of cool again they're sealed never been opened um not huge value but you know i i'm, I'm gonna guess probably around 25 bucks a piece 
uh, he he had initially had five bucks each on them, so I was like, yeah, I'll take them all. And then um, I was kind of not really paying attention to the rest of his stuff, but then all of a sudden uh, these guys popped up there. Now these, um, that is a mini Zylon and a mini Colonial uh, pilot. Um, and those go with the uh, the actual ships from 78, 79. Uh, I might have the dates sort of off a little bit, but around that area, um, they're almost always missing. These guys are tiny, and um, they I've had many multiple ships, and maybe only have a few of those guys over the uh, you know over my time of collecting. Um, <clears throat> and he, he, eight bucks a piece on them, and I think he gave them to me for uh, ten for the pair in the end. Um, and then I didn't notice this guy. He pointed out, he's like, hey, there's a, a, an old made in Hong Kong, um, Luke Skywalker from 78, I think. Um, he's like, it's not his, I don't think those are his pants. I think he had a whole white getup. But, uh, um, I looked, he's in pretty good shape overall. Um, and it was only 10 bucks. Uh, you know, Star, Star Wars for 10 bucks. Can't really argue. Um, this was the thing I paid up the most for, um, and he literally threw in something else with it. Uh, I paid $25, I think, for this. Uh, it's the micro collection. Now, these were um, pro not very popular when they were initially released. Uh, I think Star Wars, um, Kenner was looking to uh, expand into another line. I think their sales have started to decline by the time Jedi came around um, on... Uh, actually, this was for Empire, never mind that. But I, I think, uh, you know, they, they knew that they had a limited time because there was only going to be one more movie after Empire. Um, so, and they were trying to, you know, expand the line. And they came up with these micro uh, collections. Um, I can't remember if micro machines were around the same period of time because that might have had something to do with this response. Um, who knows? But uh, they released these. Everything's in there except the paperwork. All the guys are in there, uh, the box. I'm not going to bother pulling it out. But yeah, it's it's pretty much all there. Um, sealed ones sell in the hundreds. Uh, this one I'm anticipating to double, maybe a little bit more than double my money on it when I sell it in the end. Um, and, you know, uh, he threw in. He's <laughs> like, here, you may as well have this because I'm good. It's the Death Star, Escape Death Star set. He's not sure if it's all there. He thinks it is, but he knows that all the figures are there. Um, and he just threw it in. So that, you know, worked out really well. Um, in fact, I, you know, I, I was kind of shocked at that. But yeah, that was a great start to the show. So uh, I was really happy with that. Um, and then throughout the day, I picked up a ton of paper. Um, most of this stuff, you know, I'm not paying very much for. Um, and the thing about paper is, although I'm showing you pinbacks, these are two really nice pinbacks. Um, this is the Globe, which is Toronto paper for the Just Kids Safety Club, uh, pinback. And, uh, I paid 20 bucks for the pair of these. This Bob Chewing, um, tobacco, one I've seen sell for over $75 on its own. Um, so, yeah, it was definitely worth picking those up for that uh, thing again. Just a stack of tobacco silks in here. Um, they're not huge money, three to four dollars a piece, but there's 27 of them in there for 12 bucks, and I think he knocked it down to 10 in the end. A few other things, this was five dollars, the cap band from the HMCS Fraser. Um, not really a way to date it, but I'm gonna uh, do some more research and see if the Fraser was a World War II ship, probably. Um, these, a little pricier, but it's a um, FLIR bubblegum um blotter uh and anything that's chewing gum people love uh this was uh probably around 19 teens era jello sorry about the glare uh jello qp uh jello recipes book but it features the qp's and it's a specific to canada which is actually kind of attractive to americans because those the american one will probably be uh, a lot easier to get the canadian one's a little more unusual and harder to find that's just based entirely on our um uh, the difference in population. They just didn't print as much. Um, anything that's even sports related, uh, any sport, um, bowling. This is for a Toronto bowling alley. I'm going to guess somewhere around the 1920s. Um, it's a scorecard. Um, there is a date on there, but I can't quite make it out. I'm going to have to look. Is it 1916? No. 
Who knows? Maybe. Um, I don't know who A.J. Hartman is. Maybe a famous bowler? Maybe not. I don't know. But, um, you know, these were mostly around 10 bucks, And usually when I buy a bulk, they drop the price significantly. So I'm probably paying around 8 bucks a piece for these max. Um, this is a gold ring. It was a trotting horse. And it's a little booklet about uh, that. I think they were still around. Again, probably, you know, 19... 100s 19 teens uh early version um of the michelin man and it's a pamphlet for the mission look by the looks of that you know, i'm thinking 1918 1920 to 25 type error just by the look of the car um you know five bucks um this is a 1959 avro aircraft um payment slip uh for an employee um, and, uh, I've had a lot of luck selling, uh, Avro stuff, uh, they, um, the connection to the Avro Arrow, uh, and Canadian history is very strong, and pretty much anything that I get that is actually, uh, from that time period, you know, the, the late 50s when they were doing the development of the Arrow, uh, sells really well, so that was a pretty no-brainer for pickup. These little, uh, they're probably, I'm gonna say 1970s, uh, plastic strips that would have went inside of um uh on the ends of like pop racks and things like that display racks uh there's a ton of them in there it's 10 bucks for all of them and then uh, i grabbed these two uh celluloid advertising um uh rulers um one's for canadian laboratory supplies and i think the other one's for an underground cable company um they're electable they were five bucks each why not again uh, 58 shell schedule for Canadian football, the CFL. Um, and this is just like a little map, but it's for the 1934 Chicago's World Fair. Um, and it's, I believe, the Gray Sightseeing Line Company of Chicago. Uh, interesting little pamphlet and book. Um, again, I think it probably got knocked down to around five bucks because there's eight on there. That was thrown in. Um, it's just a picture of somebody in a scout uniform, and uh, people love these kind of things um, because, you know, you can sort of guess the time period. Nice picture, too. It looks like they're in mountains somewhere. So, yeah, that's a cool little pickup. And then this one, it's five bucks for the pair of these, um, and it is Indian Beecraft booklet, and uh, it was from New York City, and then another one that was Photo Productions. Sorry about the terrible camera, one-handed camera work. Um... But you can see the Walco B Co. Probably guessing 1920s just by sort of the Art Deco style of graphic used. Uh, and then this one just breaks down um, another small pamphlet on Indian symbols. Uh, anything that is uh, Aboriginal or Native, uh, Native North American um, is something that uh, always has a market uh, for. Uh, especially ones that are sort of respectful along this that seem to be based along, you know, um, that's a beautiful image. I mean, strong chieftain. Um, and this is just more about the history um, of, uh, you know, some of the jewelry and the symbols with on, within it. I uh, don't know if it's historically accurate. Sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. Um, this one seems to have it down there. I know people are looking at it going, oh my god, they were Nazis. Um, no, the swastika has a long history before, um, Hitler co-opted it for his evil little, sorry, not little, but horrific plans. Um, it was a symbol of rolling logs, which was, uh, apparently for good luck. So they seem to have done some research on this, which is kind of nice. Um, and then it has something about birthstones on there, probably because it's a jewelry company, but who knows? Um, really minty Dukes of Hazard Viewmaster, uh, real set. Um, the Dukes, uh, stuff always sells pretty easily for me. Um, and it's in really, really nice shape. It was 10 bucks. And this is a, uh, I paid up for this one. This one was 35, but it's for my collection more than anything else. It is, uh, Howie Wing, uh, 19, oh, I'm going to get this wrong. Uh, probably 1920s, 30s? Maybe 40s, I don't know. Uh, Howie Wing was a was a, a radio character, um, and in Kellogg's uh, they sort of adapted uh, him. And, and this is like a little elastic band pistol, um, which you could, uh, I'm assuming, cut off the back of the box. And that's been done, and it's folded together, and uh, it's a cool little piece. Um, I 
think if I looked, I actually found that it was did have Canon on there. So it is Canadian. I collect Canadian advertising pieces. So that will go into that company now. Um, you're probably going along saying, Jay, that is not a $1,000. Um, so how did you end up spending that? And this is how I ended up spending it. Uh, a longtime dealer friend of my family, uh, uh, which I bought some of these off in the past, one or twos, finally said, hey, I've got a bunch of these. Do you want to buy them all? And I said, I would be interested if the price was right. Uh, and the price was right. Um, roughly, I paid under $5 a piece for these. Now, these I have sold in the past, um, some of them up in the hundreds uh, for these. They are um, Brook Bond Tea in Canada, or Red Rose as it's commonly known uh released um pitcher cards in the 60s in tea and uh those are pretty common they're the diamond you know but they were beautifully rendered uh had good research done in them especially for the dinosaur sets and the imagery and the artwork is fantastic i can't remember the artist's name offhand uh but he is a known artist and was known for doing early dinosaur stuff so the dinosaurs obviously are the big one um these would have been hung in the store sort of announcing that hey that the pitcher cards are in the tea right now as an incentive for people to pick that tea over other ones because if your kiddo is collecting them and he's saying ma can you get can you get the tea with the pitcher cards in it well you're, you're probably going to pick that one um but these are ridiculously rare uh they were disposed of almost instantly um at the grocery store they would have been thrown out um you just don't see them um i had found uh a bunch of them sorry i'd only come across a few of them over a period of time um and um yeah you know they, they're just rare as hen's teeth uh the dealer friend of mine um happened to come across quite a number of them um that's a nice larger size one there's all different ones on here for different series the tropical bird series uh that gorgeous toucan image um some are double-sided this one's a single-sided um this gorgeous elephant which was their um african elements and it's uh, african animals and it's in french nice giraffe on there um double it's actually one that would have two-sided that would have hung over top like that it's just uh gorgeous um and same thing here's another one for your tropical birds nice bigger one um just beautiful artwork beautiful imagery um related to cards so of course i'm gonna love them um and yeah so i picked up those cardboard boxes over there um have multiples um now not huge numbers uh but enough um and uh you know when you get an opportunity to buy um on these you do now i'm not going to be stupid i'm not going to flood the market and throw all of them up at once uh whenever you get multiples of anything the best thing you can do uh if you have the patience um, is to release a few at a time uh, you don't want to flood the market with anything you get people this happens all the time people will find um you know something that was previously exceptionally rare and still is exceptionally rare um but they will have a, a find uh of you know multiples of them and they will get excited and throw them up on ebay and you know they'll just keep putting them up and putting them up but the problem is is that people start thinking you know what why am i paying you know a thousand dollars for this and then the next one that comes up it goes for 800 and the next one that comes up next week goes for less than that and less than that and eventually by the end of it they've devalued them completely <clears throat> even though they're still pretty rare items um, it's just that people have had uh, overkill on it. So what you generally, the rule of thumb is, for me anyways, is release things slowly. Don't just dump everything out at once. Um, you're hurting yourself. You're hurting the hobby um, and the value of other collectors, uh, collections as well. Um, because, you know, when people think, oh, this is just, there's going to be another one next week, they tend not to buy um so yeah so i'm going to probably release a few of these at a time uh over the next couple of years and um yeah i'm pretty confident i'm going to make uh i it, it, the, the best part for me is getting these from my own collection i have one of each now uh and that uh, i'm going to make um, probably more than double my money um over time uh and i'm pretty happy with that so that was it from the Woodstock Nostalgia Show. I still haven't got around to buying a GoPro. Um, I, 
I spent uh, the early part of the week, I had surgery, uh, and I didn't even know if I was going to go to the show. Uh, you can I'll read the explanation, or I, I talk about that in the other video if you want to check it all out. Um, but I won't bore you with it again. Um, I hope you guys are able to find some stuff. There's lots of uh, shows going on right now here in Canada, up and coming. Uh, we've got uh, the Aberfoyle show in Ontario. Um, and then the big Christie Outdoor Antique Show, which I think is still the largest outdoor antique show in Canada. Um, lots of great stuff there, although it does get a bit pricey. Um, but if you're a collector, it's a great place to go. So uh, I'm going to wrap that up. And uh, yeah, if you guys like this kind of content or you have friends who are into this kind of content, um, maybe shoot them the links. I'll put the links uh, to the Instagram uh, store uh, page and the Facebook store page. And if you could like and subscribe and maybe pass uh, a link onto this video onto one of your friends who are into this, and maybe get them to like and subscribe, that would be great too. Really appreciate it. All right, y'all. See ya.